Welcome back to another episode of Inside Access Control, sponsored by SIA. Very excited today to have Rob Douglas from BioConnect join me. Rob, I really appreciate you taking the time. Thank you. It's my pleasure, Lee. Absolutely. So I know you've been busy. Uh, I've watched some of your videos and the, uh, the, you were early on the trade show, uh, virtual trade show kick, which I really appreciate and commend you for taking that jump quickly. You pivoted pretty good uh, on doing that. So I commend you for doing that. Um, I thought Thank what you. we'd do uh, is why don't you give us a quick background on yourself and the company, and then we'll dive into some of the topics that we, uh, we discussed prior. 9-11 uh, gave birth to an industry and it's the biometric industry. And uh, back at the time, I was a board member of a company called Bioscript, which is the market leader in fingerprint recognition. And um, this whole industry of biometric for access control got started because of a need for higher protection of sensitive areas like airports. And uh, not long after, I became the CEO of, of Bioscript. And I remember in 2007 being at ISC West. Every year I go to ISC West. And for some reason, as I'm walking through the hallway this particular year, I thought to myself, my industry is never going to get it. And I'm gonna do something about it. And uh, what I was referring to at the time was everybody was focused on the selling of you know, cards for access control and video surveillance. These two areas are really the, the profit engine of, of our industry at the time and still is the case today. And I thought, we've got to get to a world of identity and trust of people getting into all aspects of physical facilities. And so not long after I stepped down from Bioscript after it was purchased by L1 and I decided to go start a company to solve this problem. And um, uh, so I'm an example of somebody who went from being a professional CEO of a public company to do a startup, put everything on the line, all in favor of this ambition of bringing trust to physical access and physical access events so that we can have higher levels of trust, reduced fraud, higher security, and user simplicity. And that's really the journey that started BioConnect now 10 years ago. And we've certainly evolved in terms of our trust tools, but it's fundamentally the same problem. You know, to give you an example is, do you know that you can actually go into all 7-Eleven stores with, with your HID card and replicate the card in 15 minutes in a, in a local convenience store? And, and yet people are using these things as primary security to get into facilities. So there's a fundamental problem out there. Uh, we decided to make it our life's work. Um, and I continue to be fascinated. I'm not even sure why I'm so fascinated by it, but I feel like this is a problem and a problem worth solving and committing a lot of energy to. And um, so that's really the story. It's all actually connected to IC West. I think I've been to IC West now 15 years in a row. And um, I think, you know, the industry has certainly evolved quite a bit since uh, making that decision in 2017 or 2007. Uh, but there's a long way to go. Oh, we still have a lot of credentials that we're using out there to get into things that are not, that are really the weak link in the trust chain. And uh, so that's maybe just a little bit of some of the internal motivation of, you know, why we started BioConnect. And, you know, the platform itself has been built to solve the problem of how do I allow all these biometric innovations plug into one platform so that the world's access control systems can use them. And so today, 80% of the world's top access control systems are plugged into the platform. Uh, we just recently now integrated into 60% of the uh, MFA, the multi-factor authentication um, solutions on the digital side, on the IT side, they're now plugged into the platform as well. And the whole basic idea is just allow more and more tools to be used instead of just a card to provide higher levels of trust or authentication assurance as people get into and around uh, facilities. Yeah, so talk to me a couple of things that you, you mentioned there. Um, yeah, I'm familiar with those machines. I, I'm a big believer that uh, I call procs the cigarettes of our industry. And it's one of those things that I think, uh, you know, I, I don't understand about our industry that we have value statements around safety, security, yet we can't seem to get off of the drug of selling an insecure product. It kind of goes right now. I know there's a place for it and, and there's a use case for it, but I think as an industry that's going to catch up to us, because there's a lot of people uh, like yourself and, and other companies that um, understand trust and what that means. And the other part is, is that I do think, and uh, I've written and, and love your input on this, is that the, uh, our, 
our love affair with the credential of that card is changing. And a lot of it is around the identity side and trust and, and actually what, what the thing can do. So like the value or arbitrage is moving away from, you know, the generation of a credential and the issuance of a credential, uh, in my opinion, and, and moving more to the identity side, which you're smack dab in the middle of. And then the what you do with it side, whether that's multi-factor, creating experiences, um, leveling up uh, the assurance that might be there. That's where, in my opinion, the, the magic is going as these physical structures become more, they act more like logical structures. Mm -hmm. Um, what are your thoughts around yeah. some of that, that that I mentioned? Well, that's actually very juicy from the world that uh, we live in. And um, so I'll make a couple of comments and you can direct me further if you like, is that, so, you know, we've got a world where there's still hundreds of millions of these cards out there, whether it's a Prox card, I-Class, MyFair, there's different EM, like there's different card types. The problem, of course, is that to upgrade to something else requires a rip and replace. You've got to actually physically make infrastructure changes to access control. How fast does access control move? Well, it turns out it moves at the speed of a building. It doesn't move. Once it gets into a facility, it doesn't come out. And there's so few examples of you know, upgrading of the technology. It's just not funny. So that's why we still have it. And yet, we got to get to a better world. People want mobile. They want to use uh, credentials on the digital side as well. And uh, they also want to be able to have flexibility that depending on the threat level, they want to use different levels of authentication. You see, the problem with a card reader and card is once it's mounted on the wall, you're stuck to that credential for eight to 10 years. I mean, threats are moving around the enterprise continuously. And so you've got to be able to create a threat model just like we have threat models on the digital side, we need threat models on the physical side. Like you mentioned logical, it's like logical, exactly. We gotta have a world where that door can change and morph its authentication requirements up and down based on the threats that are experiencing within the company or around the company or around the community. COVID's a perfect example. Three months ago, nobody's even thinking about authentication for health and now, you know, there's a massive opportunity to actually bring health as part of the authentication process of determining whether in fact I'm gonna let you in. Well, you've got to have a different type of platform or you've got to be able to create a threat model. So there's a lot of learnings truthfully from IT that can be brought to access control. And I think BioConnect now has probably spent the last three years doing nothing but that. Let's take everything we've learned about IT and get it to physical access. So. You now have multi-factor authenticators like uh, Duo Security or Okta or Ping Identity. Those same authenticators you're using to get into digital assets, you can now use them at the door. So the user presents a card, they get a push to their phone, they do a Okta or a, um, a Duo authentication, and now they've created two-factor authentication and I've not had to change anything at the door. So uh, another example is threat model, um, um, a threat model, a threat model. So BioConnect has now built a threat model authentication platform for physical access. So you've got like, if you remember back when 9-11 happened, the US government created five threat levels from green through to red. Well, we actually now have five threat levels around COVID. And so we've actually built an authentication uh, threat model based on those five color codes uh, to allow the enterprise to pick different levels of authentication based on the risks that exist around the enterprise at that moment in time. Yeah, what's what's interesting there is a, a, a couple things on that side is that uh, something I've been talking about and, and I, I, I'd like your input on it is that what you're talking about though is a different reality than a lot of what our industry is used to or wants it to be in a lot of cases. Like I feel like You've got two groups uh, within our industry that some are face, faced backwards, if you would, based off of older technologies where they are, and it's sort of a milk run type approach. And then you have an entire group of people focused on the other side. And, and whether it's a forcing function that's going to happen, I don't know what it's going to be, but it sounds to me like we need a new shared reality, um, as well as it's not only just from a technical standpoint, but it sounds like a new shared reality on the size of the marketplace that we could have. 
um, and and you know and bringing in new different technologies that it's not like biometrics aren't just based off of in my opinion as an alternative to a reader what you're talking about is a is a diff, an entire different use case around data mining and visualization and um, the ability to uh, make systems dynamic instead of them being sort of you know set and forget binary type where you know the first time you set it up the other, only thing that it ever does after that is just you know change who can come in and who can't come in but it's not a it's not dynamic in a lot of ways right so i i, I it's interesting to me of sort of maybe now the covid side of this is actually that thing that t-boned the conversations we were having before around uh safety and, and security or, or i'm sorry safety and convenience and then the, the, the COVID health concerns that we had are now going to maybe generate a better use case or, or awareness at the end user side that maybe some of the rip and replace stuff that we talked about before will happen now because the old stuff that's been on the, on the wall that's just been about physical safety can't support these use cases that are critical to now business continuity and, and just the over way that we, overall way we operate now as, as society as a whole. Well, and I'm, I'm make, I'd like I'd love to make a comment about this is that let's just go to what you just said, which is you've got a whole community out there that's happy with yesterday's version of authentication, uh, translation of card reader. And then you have all these innovations of tomorrow. But why aren't they being deployed? Because it does require rip and replace. So the answer lies to get from yesterday to tomorrow, you have to do retrofit. You cannot, we, we cannot bring technology to market that's gonna force people to rip things out and replace them. And the neat thing uh, that BioConnect uh, uncovered about uh, probably about two and a half years ago and brought it into market uh, about, I guess, last fall, is we've, we've found a way where you can retrofit all existing Wigan card readers, no rip and replace, and get on with these other authentication technologies. And it's a little IoT device that sits very close to the panel that communicates to the cloud. And it can allow us to now bring digital authenticators to uh, the door. So the user presents a card and gets a push to their phone, does a, does a um, let's say an Okta authentication or presents their card and can get a face recognition to their phone and now does face recognition without actually even screwing a biometric on the wall uh, or could do a a health declaration where I'm going to ask you four questions about your current health status, where you're going to declare your health status as, as an input to deciding whether I let you in. So I think the answer, what we've uncovered, because we've, like you, been beating our heads against how to get innovation into uh, the enterprise, the way to do it is just by building building blocks on top of what's already there. Don't replace any of it yeah, but and Rob, make use of it. Let me ask you, though, as you describe the use cases that you do, I you describe your company as a biometric company, but is that what you are? We're a trust company. Interesting. Okay. Uh, so we're a, we're a company around trust. Biometrics was the original way we came into it because we can establish hard trust based on your biometric information, but we can also establish trust based on multi-factor authentications, based on answers to uh, surveys. We're going to release, um, we'll release in the next couple months where we can take thermal camera input into the platform so we can take that as another data feed to help us in the authentication. We, we in essence build an identity score of the person as they're requesting an authentication to a door. And, and um, so the origins are biometrics, but the today and into the future, it's all kinds of different tools can be used to bring trust. But the thing that's most important from what we've learned is we got to do it in a way that does not require rip and replace. And that is the thing that's just sort of turned everything in a completely different mode for us so that like an, an enterprise today can light up four doors uh, to use these technologies in 20 minutes. This little IoT device can do four doors at a time and then you can plug into the service and now you can have these other authentication options available to you. And so it seems to me the whole trick is how do you do it to make it simple? How do you make it secure? How do you make it private, including you know, all of the uh, personal information must remain on-prem, cannot go to the cloud. So we've solved that problem also. And yet, how do you take advantage of what the cloud can offer and what mobile can offer to, to allow higher levels of authentication? And so, yeah, we see ourselves in the business of creating trust. 
I, I love that. So uh, to, to wrap up, because uh, I could talk to you all day long about this, and maybe we'll do another session where we could talk about more about the trends on that side, because I, I do think you're on the, the front end of what is the phase changes that are happening. Um, if somebody wants to find out more information, uh, what's the best way to do that? Well, I'll give them two ways, um, and I'll make a comment. Uh, two ways are uh, is bioconnect.com. And if they want to reach out to me directly, my, uh, my email is rdouglas at bioconnect.com, or you can reach me uh, in LinkedIn. And um, one of the things I want to offer to your, uh, to your uh, listeners is that we're looking for ASP partners, uh, authorized service providers. So we work with a large network of systems integration firms through the access control manufacturers. And this solution, this solution called B-Link, that I'm referring to is a subscription service. So for all of those firms out there who want to build another RMR revenue stream to help them scale out the other side of COVID, we have something for you. And this is a, this is a simple, uh, well-priced, uh, great value for security that creates an RMR revenue stream for the systems integration and dealer community. You can see a uh, full details on our website uh, we're accepting and reviewing. Uh, we've got a criteria as, as we look at our the partners to join this particular program. Uh, but it, you know, we know as an industry, RMR is like the, um, you know, the uh, the sacred area of uh, of um, of um, financial success for the integration community. This is a, a great way to go and expand their RMR for their future and help them dig out from the other end of COVID. Well, wonderful. Well, thank you for sharing that. I appreciate the conversation and the insight into uh, the, the company you're building uh, focused and centered around trust, which I think is a, a great way to summarize what is happening a lot within uh, the current atmosphere of what we need right now. So thank you very much. I appreciate you taking the time and I look forward to catching up with you again. My pleasure. Thank you, Lee, for the opportunity.